Okay, hello everybody. My name is David Andelfaddle. I'm with the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, and I'm here at the 40th Annual Fall Policy Conference. Uh, sitting down with me right here is uh, Nobu Kiyotaki of Princeton University, and Nobu has agreed to uh, speak on a, a, a paper that he, he just spoke about a, a few, few minutes ago in the conference. It's called Wholesale Banking and Bank Runs in Macroeconomic Modeling of Financial Crises. So that's a mouthful. <laughs> It's co-authored with Mark Gertler and Andrea Prestepino. So, thank you for joining us, Nobu. Yeah. Uh, this uh, wholesale banking and bank runs, I mean, for, for people who are not familiar mm -hmm. with banking and yeah. bank runs, I mean, yeah. what is wholesale banking? Mm -hmm. I suppose it differs yeah. from retail banking. Yeah. Yeah. Can you explain so, for us the difference? So, the traditional bank run is focused on the retail banks and the Lots of the household deposit uh, worry about the healthiness of the bank, and uh, they line up to get the money before the bank run out of money. I guess this and is like a, it's a it's wonderful a, life kind yeah, of scenario. If you've yeah. something like so that, that, retail that, level, yeah, that, households running to the yeah. bank. Okay. So that's the traditional bank run. Right. And uh, but the recent bank run in the 1970s. Uh, uh, continental Illinois bank run, or <coughs> collapse, or more, more importantly, the recent uh, uh, Great Recessions. Bank run is not uh, on the retail banks, right. but uh, actually the bank run is centered in the interbank market or, or the wholesale funding market. Basically, the, nowadays, a lot of financial institutions borrow money from other institutions, non, financial, non-commercial in banks, and uh, so like investment banker, for example, okay. uh, they raise fund mostly from uh, other financial institutions, like, like uh, uh, pension funds, or pension funds, as well as commercial bankers. Oh, as well as uh, commercial yeah. bankers. Yeah, and uh, uh, they don't raise much fund from the household. I see. And the, there, the bank run is basically the lender, big lenders like uh, other commercial bankers or uh, the the <coughs> or the insurance company. They stop rolling over the loans. Uh, like uh, rolling over means the short term, say overnight loan. They stop rolling over. Sure, so that's short very term. much like a demand deposit yeah, liability. Yeah, it is. When people have a have an account at their yeah, bank, they're yeah. effectively rolling over uh, yeah. their loan to the bank night yeah. after night. Yeah, but and then they might all run to to withdraw their cash. Yeah, but here the, you stop rolling over the overnight and finance. overnight financing. And then, the, then the, this uh, borrower, yeah. say investment banker, yeah. uh, run into trouble. I see. Uh, they start selling the assets, and uh, when a lot of investment bankers start selling the assets, like uh, asset price, mm -hmm. like uh, mortgage-backed securities or lots of financial product they hold, the price of that starts falling, and that point. Even if the, uh, the at the beginning they are healthy bank, run into the trouble because of the asset price drop enough, they become insolvent. Right. So, so but what, what you're describing to yeah. me, and, and probably this might be uh, familiar to a lot of uh, yeah. listeners, is it yeah. sounds to me like you're describing a standard uh, retail Dear level bank. kind of run. The, the banks uh, have to meet the uh, large wave of uh, demand for cash. cash. By selling off assets, but the difference is, is the, the difference? difference is the traditional bank run. Mm -hmm. uh, it's based on the like a sequence, something called the sequential service constraint, mm -hmm. which is basically if you go early, you get the full returns. First come, <laughs> first serve. First come, first serve, and if you don't go early enough, you lose the money. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the wholesale case. Actually, the, you basically every contract is a short term, okay. a large fraction of contract is short term. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, you stop, if you stop rolling over, <laughs> then the, the, 
the bottle has run into uh, troubles that selling the assets, then at the end of the day, everybody gets hit because yes. of the asset price drops so much. And uh, you, you change the, dif the difference between the uh, liquidity shortage, uh, the shortage of the liquid assets versus illiquid, uh, the insolvency, the banker is the insolvent, is much more subtle. Like uh, when you look at the popular writing of, say, Krugman, uh, they always say it's the insolvency and liquidity shortage yes. is a different thing. Yes. But so here, uh, liquidity shortage quickly uh, transformed <laughs> into the solvent. insolvency because of the asset price, like uh, mortgage-backed securities price drop enough, then they are in trouble. So the, the question is, the, how do you stop this kind of uh, bank run, or what is the cost of well, bank run? Or that is a good <laughs> question, but that's not the question I'm yeah. going to ask you right yeah. now. Uh, the, for, before we get there, yeah. uh, uh, I'm aware of different uh, uh, theories as to what actually triggers these events. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in, in, in your in, view or in your model, what, yeah. what, what causes these things what, to happen? What causes is the, if the before the crisis, yeah. we have a big buildup of the wholesale funding market. Mm -hmm. Basically, the investment bankers and uh, all, all these financial intermediaries uh, who rely on the funding from other banks, yes. or other financial intermediaries, become very big. Okay. And uh, that itself is, uh, is not the bad things, okay. uh, which the, if wholesaler has a better uh, lending opportunities, right. more fund goes to the wholesale banker is a good thing. And, uh, but the, when the little bit of negative shock hits, like uh, say default of the mortgage market starts going okay. up, uh, it will hit to the most vulnerable sectors. In this case, the wholesaler who has a uh, rely heavily on the short um, market funding. Uh, and then negative shock, a little negative shock can generate the situation called the, like a multiple equilibria. If nobody stop rolling over as a price <laughs> stays high and therefore the wholesale banking sector is still solvent. Ah, but okay. uh, if people stop rolling over and uh, if government don't, don't intervene, then as a price drops okay. enough, and then entire wholesale banking sector. So there is a psychological component, component here, but it's triggered by, kind by of a, a small negative shock. shock. Yes, yes. I see. So, yeah. um, okay. So now, now we have uh, without a, the, mm -hmm. the traditional kind of retail level bank runs yeah. you claim yeah. rely on esoteric mm -hmm. things like first come first, first serve. But here, yeah. this is different. It it's doesn't rely there. on that. Yeah. Um, and, and the and the institutions operating yeah. in this in this wholesale market, they would be the the, the Invest give the who uh, J P Morgan, yeah. Bear Stearns, yeah. Lehman Brothers. Yeah, they are all big financial. The money profession. market mutual funds Ma yes. as, as suppliers. So these yeah. are these are the agents that are yeah. operating that's in this right. wholesale market. Ma yes. Okay. Yes. So that's the triggering event. Yeah. There's a possibility of a contagion. If yeah. if if everybody remained calm, it would yeah. be fine. Yeah. But, but people start to uh, no Stop longer loading. roll over the debt. Yeah. And this, this precipitates a, uh, a sale of assets. Yeah. At, at, so so the, what, what makes the, is, it, uh, is there some friction in these? In this yes. They're the, liquid or something? Yeah. So the, if the, this asset mm. uh, starts sold in the market, yeah. potential buyer, yeah. like uh, other retail banks right. or maybe uh, non-financial uh, sectors, they are not good at uh, dealing with uh, these assets, say mortgage-backed securities. Right. They can not use your household can buy these kind of things. They're and pretty uh, esoteric products. They're yeah. idiosyncratic. You yeah. don't know if they're good or bad. But, and uh, usually only yeah. professional buys. Right. And if professional uh, buyer is uh, concentrated in the wholesale banking sectors, right. and if they start selling the assets, and uh, 
the potential buyer doesn't pay too much right. uh, for the and uh, in the like a uh, height of crisis like uh, uh, they try to sell the AAA tranche of the the very high grade tranche of the mortgage back securities, and uh, price drops like uh, twenty two cents for dollar, and uh, and uh, even if default rate is tiny. So this is <laughs> yeah. I think that's an important yeah. point that yeah. I, I think that uh, so it's even these AAA rated yeah. tranches yeah. of. Private label yes, securities, yes, these mortgage-backed securities. Yes, now, people may laugh that the yeah. ratings were not appropriate, yeah. but in fact, as you pointed out, yeah. they, they rating. continued to service there. Yeah. They did not default. No. So, arguably, they were rated correctly, correctly but because uh, they don't measure liquidity. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So, okay. So, so, the liquidity here is the potential buyer is not as good as right. the usual buyer. And then usual buyer, in this case, like a wholesale bankers or investment bankers, mm -hmm. they are short in cash. And then because of the but lenders stop well, lending. Back up, back up a second. Who's shorting the cash here? Uh, the wholesale banker who, whose kind of uh, like creditors stop. Lehman? Yeah, Lehman. Why don't we use an example? Yeah, yeah. So Lehman what were is, they doing? So Lehman is uh, Lehman's lender. Stop rolling over the short-term credit so, right. to the stop lending to the Lehman. They have to sell the asset to in the market. Although and I heard Lehman's was heavily invested in subprime. Yeah, material. subprime. So this is not the, exactly the AAA rated no, stuff. No, the I'm subprime. At, at the end of the day, their subprime securities default rate is not that bad. Even subprime. Yeah. yeah. So these yeah. when people label these things toxic yeah, assets, toxic. what are they talking about? T toxic assets, but mm. the if you look at the uh, the most senior yes. uh, part of the toxic uh, mm. asset back securities, sure. the default rate is not that high. I agree. So but was that was that what Lehman was investing in? Yeah, wow. yeah, they do, and uh, so they do have a lot of the like uh, asset back securities, especially the subprime. Mo uh, back to securities. The subprime just doesn't sound like it should be yeah. AAA rated. Yeah, just subprime <laughs> itself is okay. a default so you're rate. About is the senior tranches. Of yeah, the of the subprime. I so see. subprime itself can uh, default, okay. but uh, if you have a asset backed by the subprime, mm -hmm. but the first loss is absorbed by the other people, uh -huh. then the senior part is relatively safe. So and arguably, Lehman wasn't really doing that. Something but terribly bad, uh, was it? Badly, but the lender stopped lending. Uh -huh. Then the and also the main, not just Lehman, but the Bear Stearns and all these, right. and even Goldman Sachs, right. they they had trouble in funding okay. uh, during the crisis. Then yeah. they start selling the assets. Right. But uh, when price is dropping, yeah. usually it's a good news for the buyer. Sure. But the, this time they have a big debt. Yes. Then the uh, the net worth, mm. the assets minus the debt, mm. uh, is a very move a lot, <laughs> and uh, sometimes it it become negative. Well, okay, so, so we got Lehman's here. Yeah. They're kind of going long on these uh, yeah. mortgage-backed securities. securities. They're going short on treasuries and cash. 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 We have this uh, the, event uh, that causes the prices of uh, these mortgage-backed securities to go in the wrong rate. direction, yeah. and treasuries are actually going in the mm, opposite. Upwards. So Lehman has just made a bad bet. Bad bet, and then net was become negative. Then they are going so, to be insolvent. So this liquidity event yeah. transforms into a solvency. So insolvency. Yeah. I'm going to ask two questions. Yeah. First, do you think that uh, if if mm. the creditors to Lehman had just maintained their cool, mm -hmm. that, that Lehman would be in business today? Is this your mm. feeling? Uh, if Possibly. the majority of yeah. the investment bank uh, okay. is uh, still getting funded, okay. uh, then, then so it would be... Good. Second question is, yeah. okay, so what? So we have this disruption yeah. in the wholesale banking sector. Yeah. Lehman's is getting creamed yeah. on their positions. Yeah. Other bets are going all the yeah. wrong way. Yeah. Why should the rest of America can, care? Can, why, why, I mean, why, the, why is it this not just, mm -hmm. you know, there are winners and losers in yes. the financial, the, the big the, shots on Wall yeah. Street. How does it affect? Yeah. So it does affect to the spread between mm. the assets, which is a little risky 
mm -hmm. or little illiquid okay. versus the liquid assets. During the crisis, as you said, the interest rate on uh, treasury securities drops. Right. Um, but the uh, interest rate on the uh, risky uh, mortgage-backed security or uh, commercial papers right. interest rate go up. Right. So the spread expanded. Right. And the spread expanded particularly severely after 2007, okay. summer of 2007, okay. and then shoots up okay. during the Lehman crisis. Okay. And uh, when spread go up, uh -huh. it will affect the borrowers uh, the household borrowing money from I the uh, bank or the uh, non-financial business borrowing money from the bank. So, so this, th this directly impinges on the credit conditions yeah. of, of households so and business sectors business. wanting to borrow funds to buy homes or yeah. the new capital yeah. spending. So, yes. And that's how it affects that's the right. real economy. That's right. So right. Um, so so what, hmm. what, what, what should we do about it? I mean, is uh, there, is there so anything you want to, else you want to say about no, that? No, or, the or one thing, uh, <coughs> the possible policy hmm. implication is the, like uh, generally expanding the, this wholesale bank itself is not bad things, okay. uh, which uh, if it's rely on the wholesaler has a better long opportunities or better financing technology right. than retailers. Right. That's a good thing. Uh, but at the same time, the we need to <coughs> worry about the if the, this sector become too big mm -hmm. relative to the their net worth, mm -hmm. and so so-called leverage become too big, then they become vulnerable for the this type of wholesale bank run. And uh, basically, the this, the role <coughs> the creditor of the professional creditor stop right. lending to this bank, and therefore the ex ante the before the crisis <laughs> hit, you might not want to have a too much leverage. Or the alternative way to say is that uh, this uh, important banker should have more capital right. uh, relative to the asset. And uh, that's ex ante right. policies. Ex post policy is the you might want to stop the uh, the asset price collapse uh -huh. during the crisis. That's more like a uh, <coughs> lender of last resort right. style intervention during right. the crisis. Right. So mm. to get back to. Uh, yeah. Okay, so in terms of the ex ante mm -hmm. yeah. intervention, yeah. Uh, you know, they, they, they call this sector the shadow banking sector. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, you know, I, I know that many, you know, like the Fed did, yeah. did not have jurisdiction yeah. to kind of actually yeah. soup, uh, to yeah. uh, regulate many of these yeah. entities. Yeah. And, and yeah, we can kind of see uh, yeah. Lehman's and that, yeah. but there's many other of yeah. these institutions yeah. and, yeah. you know, they operate in these yes. uh, ve uh, opaque, over-the-counter mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that's markets. Right. That's right. I mean, it's one thing to say that, you yeah. know, we should impose capital controls or, mm -hmm. or some sort yeah. of regulation yeah. on this yeah. sector. But yeah. it's as a practical matter, mm -hmm. I mean, given that it's in the shadows and that it just... Yes, how, yes. How, do you think it is possible? Yeah, the regulation of, the, by definition, <laughs> like a shadow bank's regulation is very hard. Very yes. hard. Yeah, so therefore the ex ante, like uh, what you worry is uh, where the risk is building up, yeah. and uh, when yeah, this how, stuff how can we even see the risk building up? We, we uh, can't even see these uh, people's there, there portfolios. There is uh, some yeah, balance some. sheet data, yeah. uh, like a BIS try to okay. get some data on right. shadow banks, yeah. and uh, some of the bank is no longer shadow, like right. uh, many of uh, the investment banker who survived is right. already <laughs> under the regulation of the right. Fed. And but that, that, the, that but doesn't necessarily, you know, much of the yeah. shadow banking sector yeah. was probably, its existence probably is, is to owed avoid. to the existing yeah. regulation. Yeah, that's right. I, so think, I guess the worry is that this new layer of regulation yeah. will just promote, you know, these people yes. are clever. Yes. I mean, they're going to try to innovate yes. around. Yes. Yes. And then yes. what do we do? In yeah. that? I mean, yeah. what can we do? What we can do is the ex post. Yeah, well, the ex oh, I see. So now you're out. Like, there's nothing we can really do ex ante. Ex ante. And, uh, uh, but maybe ex post, we could, the Fed could serve as a lender of last mm -hmm. resort. Yeah. 
oh, the, oh, not really, but, yeah. uh, but the try to limit the damage. Limit the, the damage. damage in uh -huh. the case like a shadow banks and right. uh, become so big. But uh, at the same time, you can see some of the, say, housing sectors. Like uh, you don't want to do the too severe regulation. As you right. said, as soon as you put the very severe regulations, uh, people try to avoid that. Right. And, uh, but the one example recently Bank of England is doing is, uh, okay, we don't want to ban the high uh, loan to income type mortgage. Like uh, some people don't have much income, but okay. nonetheless want to buy the house, when especially they are very young. Yes. So, but the, this kind of, the, like a uh, high loan to income type mortgage, if the banker is lending this, uh, they have to put a little bit more extra capital, capital requirement. Right. And uh, this regulation is not too big tax. <laughs> only a, a little bit of extra capital requirement. Sure. At the same time, if the housing price is going up, the loan to value regulation doesn't work well because of the, the value is already Correct. getting high. Right. But the loan to income one is going to work uh, when the housing price is booming. So it acts like a, during the boom, the requirement gets a little tighter and the recession it's relaxed. I see. So, so that's the kind of policy uh, people are talking about. I see. But Interesting. I wonder yeah. if it will work. Yeah. Um, but then in the meantime, I guess, mm. uh, a lender of last resort facilities, yeah. I yes. suppose. I mean, do you have a view on the Fed's yeah. intervention in 2008? I mean, yeah. was the, it successful? And I, I think so. Like uh, 2007 onward, the, the series of uh, intervention is basically tried to uh, recover the function of the interbank market. Was, it a, was it a bailout? Uh, no, it it's wasn't a, a bailout. bailout. The You're on record here in front of the audience saying the yeah. Fed's intervention was not a bailout. It's not Why the, is that? Because of the Fed actually made a huge amount of money. The Fed so made a huge amount of money. money. Because <laughs> of the, if it's a bailout, you buy the price which is higher than the, right. the supposed to be the real value. Right. That, that is a subsidy yeah. to the seller of the assets. But uh, actually, Fed made a huge amount of money. Almost every program they did. So, so the how effective mm. is still people are debating. Right. But uh, it's not the bailout <laughs> or transfer money to the big bankers. Okay, okay it's good to hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, very interesting. Uh, enjoyed the talk too. Yeah. And um, if you if you had to uh, summarize, you know, in two or three bullet points, yeah. the takeaway. The takeaway from your paper, the research that you're doing here with your co-authors, yeah. what, what would it be? What so the, this, we have to worry about the new type of the financial crisis centered around the wholesale uh, the shadow bankers, share, shadow banks. And the shadow bank, it's development of shadow bank itself is not the bad things, mm. but the potential risk is the, they are vulnerable to the uh, rollover risk, uh, and, uh, and the policymakers should be uh, right. prepared to act. Right, so I that. guess uh, for viewers who, who don't know, I mean, the recent uh, financial crisis was actually, unlike historical financial yeah. crises, yeah. which were centered in the retail yeah. level, yeah. Uh, this one was centered in the wholesale, wholesale level. Yeah. And um, there were ver various uh, mm. Uh, mm. policy responses yeah. to the, yeah. the crisis, as I guess, in the Depression. We yeah. had the uh, institution of federal deposit yeah. insurance, yes. uh, the Fed's lender of last yeah. resort facility yeah. that essentially eliminated retail-level yeah. banking yeah. runs in the United yeah. States. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. this is something it's similar is not It's feasible. not easy to not easy eliminate. To. Like a uh, deposit insurance, it's it doesn't gonna, work it's well. It's not going to work here, yeah. no. Well, very interesting, Noble. Mm. Thank you so much for spending the time to yeah. discuss this with us. Yeah, and thank you. Joy St. Louis. <laughs>